This forest in eastern Germany contains some of Europe's oldest human settlements. People have lived and died here for thousands of years. But now the tombs of these ancient dead attract a modern breed to the forest. Grave robbers. No one knows just how many objects they have scavenged. But archaeologists have been powerless to prevent it. When the Berlin Wall came down, black market dealers flooded over from the west and handed out metal detectors. So now we've got the problem of people running all over the forests looking for burial sites. In 1999, three men came combing through this forest with metal detectors. After several hours, they found themselves in a small clearing near a hilltop. Suddenly, their detectors came alive. With a pickaxe, they tore into the earth. And after a brief struggle, the earth gave up a treasure. It had kept safe for over 3,000 years. What these robbers didn't realize was that they may have dug up one of the most significant archeological finds of the century. For they had found an object that would change how we think about one of the most important times in all human history. The Bronze Age. What evidence archaeologists did find pointed to an altogether more primitive society. Among these remains were spears. And axes. And above all, swords. And they have sealed Bronze Age Europe's reputation as a place of darkness and even savagery. Swords appear, true swords appear, round about 1700 BC over much of Central and Northwestern Europe. And we have thousands of swords. A sword really only has one function. Their design shows quite clearly that they could not be used for hunting animals because you have to get so close that the animal would run away. And the only real purpose for them is to be effective stabbing or slashing weapons against another person, against a human being. They're for killing men. So this was the conventional image of Bronze Age Europe. An unsophisticated place, ruled by the sword. 
very different from the sophisticated civilizations of Egypt and Greece. But all that was before the discovery of the disk. In May 2001, Harold Meller had just been appointed head archaeologist at one of Europe's most important Bronze Age museums, the Museum of Halle in eastern Germany. One morning, a colleague took him aside and showed him some photographs. They would change his life. These snapshots were taken by the gang who had plundered the forest near his museum just a couple of years earlier. They showed a fantastic hoard of what seemed to be Bronze Age treasure. There were jewels, tools, and swords. But there was something else too. A disc of exquisite design. It was a 30-centimeter bronze disc covered with golden decorations. But the real sensation was that the golden decorations formed a picture. And this was something completely unheard of from the Bronze Age. It looked to me like the most significant archaeological find I had ever seen. It was now that an extraordinary thought formed in Harold Meller's mind. By rights, the disc should have been safe in his museum. Instead, it was rumored to be circulating on the black market with an asking price of a quarter of a million pounds. So he decided. He personally would track down the criminals and rescue this disc for science. After a year of sleuthing, a meeting was arranged in one of Europe's black market hotspots. Basel, in Switzerland. Harold Meller thought he'd finally tracked down the disc and its sellers to the Hilton Hotel. But a third party was also interested in this transaction, the Swiss police. Meller had tipped them off. When Dr. Meller entered the Hilton Hotel, he was constantly observed. We were observing the entrances. We knew who came in, who left. We saw what Dr. Meller was doing. An elaborate sting was underway, and archaeologist Harold Meller was the bait. Inside the hotel, I was met by a blonde woman. She asked me to accompany her to a restaurant downstairs. Sitting there was a thin, grey-haired man. Meller asked to see the disc, but the couple seemed to be stalling. I said I would have to verify the authenticity of the disc. Could they please show me the disc? He said nothing but produced a sword from his bag, and he handed me the sword and asked me to analyze that instead. Meller produced some chemicals to test the bronze sword. 
but the disc was still nowhere to be seen. And now he grew nervous. I wasn't sure where the disc could be. I didn't know. There was nothing in the suitcase. For all I knew, maybe a gun. But the disc was too big to be in there. But finally, the man opened his coat and his shirt, and from underneath his shirt, he produced something wrapped in a towel. He opened the towel, and inside was the disc, and he handed it to me. In the room, there were police officers, so we saw what was going on. And with the disc now in Mella's hands, the police swooped. They expect everything, these two, but they never expected the police. The couple were arrested, the man was handcuffed, and they were taken away. And for the first time, Harold Meller really took in the disc. There, inlaid in gold, was the reason why it had been called magical. An incredible picture of the sky, with the sun, moon, and what seemed to be stars. Nothing like this had ever been seen before. I was completely amazed and astounded. And it was a very important moment in my life. Safely back in Harold Meller's museum in Germany, the Nebra Sky Disc, as it had become known, set the archaeological grapevine buzzing. Because it wasn't just a good find, it was an incredible find. And some archaeologists suspected it was all just a little too incredible. When I first heard about the Nebra Disc, I thought it was a joke. Indeed, I thought it was a forgery. because it's such an extraordinary piece that it wouldn't surprise any of us that a clever forger would cook this up in a back room and sold it for a lot of money. So Dr Heinrich Wunderlich, the chief scientist at the museum, was called in to determine the authenticity of the Nebra disc. His laboratory is the first port of call when Bronze Age artifacts are found. He suspected verification would depend on one thing alone. Corrosion. Corrosion occurs when metal comes into contact with oxygen from the air. The disc certainly looked corroded. A green layer of corrosion had formed on its surface. But Dr. Wunderlich knew that that didn't mean the disc was genuine. The problem for archaeologists is that corrosion can be faked. Fake corrosion can fool all but the most expert of specialists. So now he began to analyze the disc in forensic detail. Corrosion forms in crystals. The larger the crystals, the longer they have taken to form. When I saw down the microscope, I saw structure which was like bubbles.
And these bubbles of corrosion were huge, much bigger than anything a faker could produce. This can not be made artificially. You can't fake time. <laughs> 